This is the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast. Okay, joining me on the show today, I'm super excited, is Ruby Ryder, the expert on pegging. And for those of you who've been listening to the show for a while, I have not talked a lot about pegging. I brought it up a little bit here and there about my own experiences with pegging, um, but I have not dedicated a show uh, to it. And of course, I've heard a lot about pegging in cuckolding relationships. The two seem to go pretty hand in hand. So I'm super excited to have you on the show today, Ruby. Welcome. Say hello to everyone. (laughs) Hi, everybody. And thank you so much for having me on the show. I just feel so grateful that I get to talk about what I love all the time. (laughs) Right? I know, me too. I feel like I'm so lucky. Okay, let me do the formal introduction. Okay, Ruby is the uh, Ruby writer of PeggingParadise.com and Pegging101.com, is a podcaster, blogger, sex worker, sex sex educator, and a published writer of erotic fiction. She has been educating people about pegging for the last 12 years. Ruby moderated panels at Catalyst Con East and West, was a speaker on the main stage at the BIL conference, and presented at DomCon LA. Her erotica is in Violet Blue's Best Women's Erotica 2014, and Ruby also appeared in an episode of Comedy Central's Not Safe with Nikki Glaser. I need to watch that. That sounds funny. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Ruby's two missions are to help interested people add one more thing to their sexual treasure chest of choices by teaching them all about pegging and to do everything she can to encourage more sex positivity with less sexual shame. Yes. Mm -hmm. She resides in Southern California near the beach. (laughs) Love this part. She loves watching the surfers change out of their wetsuits. (laughs) That would be fun to watch. So, oh my goodness, you are, you definitely are accomplished. You've been uh, educating people about pegging uh, for a long time. How did this start? How did this all get started for you? Well, if we begin at the beginning, I have always had an interest in anal play, even from when I was just becoming sexual. And I was one of those unusual kids that had access at a young age, like 16, 17, to Penthouse Letters Forum. This would be the collection of letters. They're not really, but letters, right? There's no pictures or anything. They're just supposedly letters. Well, it's really convenient because they put those in categories. So I would just flip to the anal section. I can't really track it back to why anal was such a turn on for me. But as long as there was some kind of anal action going on, I was happy. I was turned on. So then came the epiphany the day that I found the letter that it was about two couples. The women had labeled themselves football widows because their men were always at the bar watching football games. So they came back and they'd been drinking, of course, and the women were ready for them with this whole pegging setup. And they had footballs on the ground and they had the guys bend over and pretend they were centers and, and they pegged them. Right. And I was just like, wait, you can do that. <laughs> do, do what? And so that, Mind blown. yeah, so that, <laughs> put it got into my mind and it never went away and it became fodder for my fantasies for my erotica but like many many people who find some kind of a desire or a fetish or an interest sexually that doesn't fit in society's box mm -hmm, i Mm -hmm. shelved it away and labeled it bad and weird and different and it was like the secret part of me and i i was married twice i did approach both husbands with this idea. But of course, I approached it like I had leukemia or something, you know, like, oh, my God, I'm so embarrassed. And there's this thing about me. And, and they kindly but diplomatically said, no, thank you. And I didn't have the persistence or the self confidence that what I wanted was okay, to persist. So after my second marriage, I was 50 years old. And I thought, if not now, when, you know, you get older, and you start thinking that way. And I decided I was just going to jump in. And so I had a friend. He helped me put up the website, peggingparadise.com. I thought I was just going to put a bunch of erotica up there. 
but it quickly transpired or transformed into me teaching because I went down the rabbit hole, you know, pun intended. There's so many puns here. And I never <laughs> came back. And there's so much there. Oh my gosh. So I've been teaching about this for a solid 10 years and I've had the website up for 12. And it's just, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And of course, you know, I had to go out and get some experience, right? <laughs> because yes. I'd never done it before. <laughs> And I swear the universe was smiling down on me because I got on this website, which I cannot recommend and will not name at this point because it's really gone downhill. But I uh, matched up with this guy and he, believe it or not, was a hot fireman. It's like the universe was going, yes, Ruby, you will be this teacher. This is the path you are going to take, right? He was just a really sexual guy and, and thought, this is something I'd like to explore because I've explored all kinds of other things. So after our dinner, he said, well, you know, this is really a very vulnerable thing and I'm really going to have to trust you. I said, yeah, you totally will. So take your time, you know, and then we kissed goodnight and it was one of those magical kisses where everything matches. Mm -hmm. And he just pulled yes. away and said, anybody that kisses like that, I want to check this out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of how it all started. Oh my goodness. Okay. So what was that first time like for you? Well, first of all, I confess, I have confessed this many times. I lied to him. I told him I'd done it before. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, because, here's why I did. And here's why I was confident I could pull it off. It's because I have just retired from a 31 year massage career, like legit massage. I'm really good at massage. I'm good at reading bodies. I can, I see it all. I hear the gasp and I see the twitch and all of that. Mm. So I'm really sensitive to touch. And I just did a lot of research and I was pretty sure I could pull it off. And I totally did. <laughs> <laughs> well, does he know now that it, that actually was your first Only time? if he's listened to these podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but there was this moment when I was pegging him from behind. He was in doggy and I did like a reach around and he had one of those orgasms that happens with pegging that's about 10 times as powerful as a normal one when you also involve prostate stimulation. And he just said, oh, my God, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's a reach around? Oh, so I am doing him doggy and I reach around him and jerk off his penis basically. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's what I figured, I to, but I, you know, it's <laughs> good to be specific. Sure. Yeah. 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 See, okay. This is the thing. Uh, I re have realized, come to realize that this kind of prostate pleasure for men is this like secret gem that is incredible for them. And I, wish and I hope that more men would be more open-minded to it was it you that put something on your Instagram recently about like it's the 21st fucking century <laughs> like let's just fucking do this already like <laughs> it, yes guys you can have prostate pleasure and it's okay <laughs> yes well I I like to quote this lovely man uh Dr. Joe Court he's all over Instagram too and he basically says look asses do not have orientations okay not right. only gay and bisexual men can feel pleasure in their asses. We're talking about physiology here. It's not like you have different kinds of asses, please. So yeah, <laughs> that that was me. I did put a very short TikTok video. I copied it over to Instagram. Yeah. Okay. I thought I saw something and I was just like, yes, because uh, like I have a matchmaking service for um, singles who are looking for a cuckolding relationship and I get them to fill out this big, long questionnaire about themselves. There's a little part of it that asks them about the kinky stuff that they're into. And one of them is pegging. And um, it, it, it's funny because like a lot of guys are like straight. No, they're like, no, no fucking way. That is a hard no for me. Exit like, only. Well, mm hmm. Yeah, I'm like, you know, I th really think that you're missing out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, you are missing out on something incredible. And that goes back to that story about your that first time where you did the reach around. Yeah. When you give a guy this kind of orgasm, this kind of pleasure experience that is next level, it's like, how 
how are how are these other guys miss okay with missing out on that? Like this is a whole different level of pleasure that you are just being ignorant to. I don't I still don't understand it. Um, okay. Agreed. <laughs> so so cuckolding and pegging, they seem to go hand in hand. When I first got introduced to cuckolding. Uh, it wasn't long until I had s some guy who was like, you know, I really want you to peg me. And I was just like, you know, this is I was kind of annoyed by it because I was like, this is just another thing that you want me to do for you. You know, it just seems like the 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 in cuckolding, it's very male fantasy driven and it's very much like a, I want you to do this and I want you to do that and do this to me and do it that way. And with this guy and it, he has to look like this. And I was just like kind of annoyed by it. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck off. Like I'm not. And then I thought, you know, I'm not doing that. I wouldn't feel anything. I'm like, why would I like that? <laughs> it's how boring. And not just that, but I was like, I have watched pegging videos the women look uncoordinated as fuck. It's like we're not used to fucking like moving. That's exactly our body right. Like that, right? And I was like, I just I feel like I would be so awkward. Like, well, the learning curve is really steep. There's absolutely yeah. that. The learning learning curve is really steep, and it takes a while to learn that beautiful roll of the hips that every cock owner yes. has, you know, just by instinct. Yes. So there is that, but. In terms of their, so so let me backtrack just a little bit because I hear this reaction a lot from potential givers who are asked about pegging, about, no, I'm not interested in that because I'm not going to get anything out of it. And yeah. I got a couple of things to say about that. First of all, yes, you absolutely can get things out of it. The world of pegging equipment will blow your mind. There are toys out there that can vibrate you internally and externally and have little targeted clit stimulators. I mean, holy crap. There's a lot of choices out there. So in terms of orgasmic pleasure, absolutely, that's a possibility. But I always kind of think, well, if that's your attitude about things, and I'm not talking about you personally, um, <laughs> <laughs> don't take this personally, it's sort of like, then why would you give blowjobs, you know? There is no rule that says there has to be this like concurrent orgasmic sensation thing going on. And sometimes it's a pleasure to give your partner pleasure. I mean, I personally take great delight in turning my partner into a trembling pile of speechless flesh. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, well, that's the thing. And the, uh, I was, when I finally unexpectedly did have my first pegging experience, I was blown the fuck away. Okay. I was like, what the fuck? And, I, and it's funny because I had guys say to me, you would love it, Venus. You would love the, the, the sense of power you get from it. And I was just like, oh, whatever. I don't know, whatever. Uh, oh, yeah. They, they were fucking right. Like, and that was the part... <laughs> They were the, uh, that was the part where I was not prepared for that. I was like, holy shit, what is this? And you know what? It, it goes back to what you were saying. You're very in intuitive to um, the way his body reacts. I was fascinated yes. by the way a guy's body reacts when he's getting fucked. That was hot as shit. Yeah. I was so turned on. I was like, oh my God, he's making these moans that like I have never heard a guy. I make. can't tell you how many times I have heard givers say that. Holy crap. So yes. many times. And it's this vulnerability and it's this sense of abandon and it's this sense of totally letting go. But the empowering side of it is really remarkable. I have to agree with you there. That was one of the things that blew my mind about it too, because I think what pegging does, what it offers, and it's certainly not for everybody, but what it offers is the ability to kind of experience sex from the opposite side of the bed, if you will. So, uh, and I know I'm talking stereotypes and generalizations here, but you get a chance to take on your partner's usual role in the bedroom and you get to experience that. And at first it's awkward, it's weird, but it can also yeah. be really empowering. And more importantly, or at least additionally, it can give you compassion and understanding for the role that they usually take. I mean, one of the things, I don't know if this happened to you, but, and I'm interested to, to hear your answer on this, but one of the things that so many givers talk to me about is, or at least just say, post anywhere, is that when they start doing this, it's like, oh my 
God, it's really hard fucking someone. You know, it's <laughs> athletic. It's like you use muscles you never knew you had. This is really difficult. And consequently, it gives them a lot of respect for the cock owners in their lives. They're like, wow, this is really something you fucking me, you know, because it is. <laughs> It's true. It's why I feel so fucking awkward and uncoordinated because I'm just like, oh, this is work. Like, this, it is work. <laughs> this does not. This does not come naturally for me. Like, yeah, and so then I think that it also helps out when you know, say you, you've got a partner and they're thinking, hey, you know, I want to do sexy time with you, and you know, if you're the cock owner, you're kind of going, oh wow, I don't know if I have that much energy. And there are lots of options. I just want to say whether it's sex or whether it's because sex is not always intercourse. And we certainly know that. But uh, whether it's pegging, I mean, there's positions, there's different types of harnesses to use. There's a thigh harness where you can just sit, sit there and just they can fuck themselves. You know, there's there's amazing things you can do. That'd be great. <laughs> right? <laughs> but you would have more compassion for your partner if they were kind of like, oh, not really, you know, don't quite have that much energy tonight. And then maybe you can either make different choices where not so much energy is required, or but the point is compassion and understanding. And yes. often this leads to a really deep um, deepening of intimacy. And at the same time, I always keep going here because I've been a sex educator for so long, I really feel compelled to hold space for everyone. <laughs> and uh, there, I wrote this article at one point in time called um, Pegging and Intimacy. And I posted it up and it got a lot of attention. There were a lot of people uh, saying, yes, yes, this is the best way. This is the only way. And, you know, as soon as you hear absolutes, the red flags go up. But the reason that I wrote it was because I was trying to impart to all of these hopeful receivers out there that um, it, this is not a Tinder hookup thing. This is not, um, usually there's a connection. There's a certain level of connection that's required between the giver and the receiver. And I'm not talking about a full on relationship, but there's trust issues. There's vulnerability issues. Uh, it feels awkward and strange when you first do it from the giver side of things. So typically this is not a Tinder hookup and I'm not saying it's never happened that way. But I was trying to discourage, like this is ever going to happen, I was trying to discourage the zillions and zillions of guys posting ads like, hey, virgin ass in Sarasota, Florida, come and get me, right? Uh, and this love, this lovely man. They do that with cuckolding too. They're like, yes. oh, come and cuck yes. me. And this, <laughs> Wait, what? this lovely man gets on the, the comments and he says, well, you know, it might be that way for you, for you people, but it's really not that way for me because my particular kink is to be treated like a thing, like an object for the pr uh, privilege and pleasure of, not the privilege, the pleasure of my partner. And if there's any intimacy between that person and me, it kind of ruins it for me. So yeah, there's lots of different ways to do this. And that's another thing I want to make sure that I mention. Pegging is so customizable. Yes. Okay. So in cuckolding relationships, what I hear often is that the husband is trying to convince his wife to peg him. And she's just like, I don't know. She, in her mind, is picturing a dominatrix, you know, dressed in latex and like uh, those kind of images. And she's like, no, 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 I cannot. I, I'm not. I, I, I'm more submissive. I can't, I can't really be like that. Does there have to be that kind of power exchange? I know you did a, a podcast episode recently about this where uh, you had feedback from somebody who uh, who said she is submissive and she was able to switch that scenario to work with that for her. Yes, that can be a challenge sometimes. You, One of the misconceptions, a big one about pegging, is that you cannot continue to be a cock owner with um, in a relationship and be dominant and also receive pegging that somehow pegging is inherently submissive. No, it's not. I mean, it requires a little bit of creativity and w the hitching point in there is that the, the part that trips people up is that it is not uncommon in relationships with a man and a woman for the woman rarely, if ever to have seen their man vulnerable because that is yeah. something that men rarely allow. I'm just switching into the gender binary speak now because it applies more. But um, 
vulnerability, unfortunately, is really often conflated with weakness, especially because women are so rare. It's so rare for them to see it in their partner. And in pegging, I am of the opinion that pleasurable anal penetration requires vulnerability. And you often see it. It's one of the most beautiful things. That's why I like positions with eye contact. <laughs> Absolutely. So you you can see that and assume that your partner's weak and kind of freak out if you are invested in those really rigid gender stereotypes. You know, your your guy has to be strong and in control and not um, not expressive of emotion and that kind of thing. Because it does kind of turn things on its head. But here's what I tell people. Just for those BDSM people out there, right? Uh, think of it this way. You can take your, or, or you can ask your your giver to uh, have the harness on. They're tied to the bed spread eagle. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, ball clamp or ball gag, nipple clamps, blindfold are all optional. And then you could ride them. I mean, does that look submissive to you? Or you could even yes. have them. You could ride them and you could actually know what it feels like to have that fiber. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or you can have them behind you in doggy position and you can have a leash and a collar on them and you can be controlling their thrusts into you. Just requires a little bit of creativity. But the thing is, is that a lot of people have the misconception as well that porn represents pegging. And don't get me wrong. I love porn, but porn is kabuki sex. Okay. It's a show and it, it should never represent what you think something is in reality. So pegging porn is completely overrepresented professional pegging porn in conjunction with feminization. So the receivers dressed up in women's clothing, um, BDSM, and that there's a variety of different things that that can look like they can be restrained. There can <clears throat> They can be restrained. There can be CBT going on, meaning cock and ball torture. Often there's um, or an, an imp impact play as well. So, And often there is verbal humiliation and degradation going on as well. Now, if you're into any of those kinks, rock on. I support you 100%. But none of them are inextric inextricably connected to pegging. That's the whole thing that sometimes people just don't get. So I think in the beginning, when a couple talks about pegging, often it is the receiver who is approaching the giver. It's important that they know the, what the partner is asking for and what they're not, because they might be asking to dress up in women's clothing. I don't know, but you have to check your partner with that but it's not an automatic. You absolutely can do pegging is one more way to sensually make love. You totally, totally can. Even though, oh, even though louder for those in the back, louder. Yeah. <laughs> even though, you know, from my perspective, even why you wouldn't want to tie him up and beat him first is beyond me, but I, I identify as a dominant sensual sadist. And that's where this is so important. This is customizable. Yeah. I love that, that you can, you can have pegging as part of sensual lovemaking totally and it can. not include it does not have to include disrespect de degradation humiliation or any of that no that's amazing and okay. sometimes that is such a delicious experience for the receiver because again stereotypes but often the women are the ones receiving the pleasure the ones receiving the attention the men are giving the pleasure they're the active ones the penetrators that kind of thing and i remember one guy telling me oh just the amount of attention that i get paid you know and i get all of this lavished upon me when i receive pegging it's just delicious yeah isn't that an interesting perspective i never thought about that yeah. But that's that would definitely be true. That's amazing. Okay, so what are some some of the other common misconceptions about pegging? Um, that it's all about pain. Um, okay, okay. That yes. one is that one is really easy, and I think that happens actually because, uh, again, porn teaches people about sexuality, which it never should. We should have comprehensive, accurate, <laughs> pleasure based sex education. <laughs> that's what we should have, mm -hmm. but. Lacking that, people learn with porn. And so porn, you know, again, it's a show. And so I think that a lot of anal experiences are unpleasant because people try and duplicate porn. So if you flash that forward, a lot of women have had unpleasant experiences with pegging because not enough foreplay was done because nobody's really learned about it first. 
So then their partner comes to them and says, well, so I want to try this pegging thing. And they say, why would you want to do something that's so painful? And, yeah. and it's really, the solution here is really, really easy, everybody. Okay. If it hurts, you're doing it wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, yes. And I have had ass play in the past where, yeah, it was, it was awful. It was really awful. And I was like, that, that is so painful. Like, forget it. Like, <laughs> I'm not doing that again. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so yes, absolutely. There's the right way and the, there's, there's the wrong way. So how do people learn? Okay. I'm assuming because you're an educator that you have, you said you have webinars, you teach people how to do this properly. So it, are there like beginners kind of courses or classes that people can, that couples can take to, to learn how to do this properly? I have two articles that I've written. First of all, one is uh, newbie solo ass play because I'm a huge proponent of solo play. Before you walk down the path of, of trying out pegging, I think it's really important to explore your own body because here's kind of how I express it. How would you like to have sex with someone who's never masturbated? They can't guide you. They don't even know their own body. Plus, right. it's not at all unusual for there to be some anxiety, some a little bit of fear of having anal penetration. That's not at all unusual because it's in such a vulnerable part of you. So if you've already played yourself and you know you've had something in there the same size as what your partner is going to put in you, right. it goes a whole lot more easily, but it takes place in both directions. And, you know, we talked a little bit about the givers, but the receivers, oh, they learned that, yes, a lot of lube with anal penetration is really a good idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. They learned that <laughs> foreplay is not 20, sex of, 20 seconds of impatient, can I put it in yet, you know? Right. That it's a whole first act of the play. I wish people would stop calling it foreplay. It's part of the sexy time experience. And I also really encourage people to never approach that part of it with impatience or expectation. I mean, have some fun there. Seduce that ass. Tease it until your partner's begging you. You know, <laughs> I like begging. <laughs> <laughs> Before I get into where people can learn more about your webinars and where to find you and everything like that, do you have any kind of uh, word, final words of wisdom about pegging uh, about this topic in conjunction with cuckolding? The words of wisdom I would have is that if this is something that you want to explore in your relationship, in your cuckolding relationship, First of all, it's really good to educate yourself because there's a lot of different ways that you can go wrong. There are ways where the first experience will put you off so badly you'll never do it again because you didn't learn about it first. So education is huge. Education is empowering. It's inspiring. It can help avoid injuries. I mean, there's all kinds of things it can do. But um, in terms of in conjunction with cuckolding, that part, I don't know, because I don't know as much about cuckolding. I know a lot about dominance and submission. And the one thing that I would encourage is it's <laughs> for the for the cuckoldress, okay? It's like one of those rewards that you can offer your partner that is worth so much that they will do so many things for you. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's very <laughs> true. It is very true. So it's, you know, I want you to do all of these different things and have all of this ready. And then if you do on Saturday, I'll fuck you. Sure. You know, <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's true. You can definitely use it as like the dangling of the carrot. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. get what you want. <laughs> That's because it's so enjoyable. It's so pleasurable for, for the receiver. Okay, so where can couples go to learn more about you and your webinars and uh, your podcast and things like that? I don't want to be confusing, but I do have three different websites. <laughs> Peggingparadise.com is my original one. That includes a fair amount of kink because I am into BDSM and I do identify as a dominant sensual sadist. And somewhere along my teaching career, I realized I was scaring people away because I was writing stories about men being beaten and fucked and tied up and things. So <laughs> I put up pegging101.com. That has all the informational articles with no kink attached, if that is your cup of tea. 
And then recently I got going an educational website, which is theartofpegging.com. And that is where you can access all of my webinars and things, see the ones that are upcoming. Right now I do have recorded the beginners. And for the privilege of being able to view it at your leisure, there's a fee for that. But all of my live webinars are free. I have not recorded the other two yet. That is up for the next uh, first couple of months of the next year. Wonderful. Okay. And uh, I will include all of the links in the show notes for today's episode. I just want to give a special shout out to one of my helpful cucks. His name is Sean. And (laughs) he's the one who said, hey, Ruby Ryder would be a great guest on the show. So thank you so much to Sean uh, as part of the helpful cuck tier. Uh, he was able to give his input on on who he thought would be a great person for the, to have on the show. So thank you, Sean. And thank you, Ruby, for joining me. Wait, before we say goodbye, okay. we have to mention that on January 6th at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern, Ruby and I are going to do a live chat on the Moan app to talk about pegging. So bring your questions. Yes. Yes. Bring your questions, your comments, your feedback, everything. Or if you just want to hang out and listen, um, we will be there on the Moan app. The link will be in the show notes. That's January 6th, 2023 (laughs) at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Thank you so much, Ruby, for joining me on the show today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me.